himself to come mm. and die for me. Someone who Amen. put him upon the cross, he was still willing to do it for me. And I'm thankful that he is long suffering and that he is faithful mm -hmm. and that I can see his hand in my life from the moment that I can comprehend up until now and still see it in the future and how mm -hmm. things work. You can, you can trace his hand. That's all right. Be encouraged. Praise God. Trace his hand. I have a supermarket of things. Mr. Tom God. Have mercy. We need a grocery basket. Wow. <laughs> you know. I will always say, first I want to thank God for Jesus Christ, oh. the sinner's friend. I will always say, and um, without apologies or reservation, <clears throat> I thank God for the ministry. I do. I know without a shadow of a doubt, I did not come here in 2016 by chance. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I've seen growth in my life from then all the way up to now. I've stumbled many times, but I'm not staying good Mm. Um, we'll keep going. Amen. I thank God for the circle of people he placed me in. I thank God for the Jacksons. I thank God for Brother Jackson and his openness to teach. And he might never see the results of it here, mm. but it's recorded in eternity. I've got myself in many situations, and the only thing that helped me to go through is what I learned here. Mm. Mm. I want to thank God for Meat Ministries. It's not perfect, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's, it's still the best ministry to me. I'm not kidding of anybody else. To me, it's the best, because this is the place where I really learn to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Knowing what it means and understand that which it means to die to self. Mm -hmm. I heard so many repetitive mm -hmm. messages from him. Sometimes it makes me kind of sick. Mm -hmm. I keep going over and over the same thing. Mm -hmm. But it finally hit home. Amen. After many years, and by God's grace, I'm going to stay the course. Hallelujah. And my wife. Mm -hmm. It came so clear to me this week that obedience is not something we do independently. Mm. It is a fruit mm -hmm. of submission. Mm. It's a fruit. Amen to that. It is the fruit. It is the outgrowth of surrendering. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And when you grasp that, you know, mm -hmm. there's no stopping. No stopping. Absolutely, God. Absolutely. I, I just thank God to be here at the ministry. Talk about all this, the, 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 the hmm. mechanics of it. It's the spirituality. You could keep the stipend, you could keep the money, you could Have keep mercy. whatever. Have mercy. What? If there is a need, use it. But keep preaching God's word. Amen. Souls are involved. Look beyond the tangible the physical, and see the spiritual. I thank God to be here at Meet Ministry. I really do. I've been challenged many times and many things have been said to me, but I still hold out. 
-hmm. It is the best for me. Maybe the worst for others, but the best for me. I thank God. Amen. I really thank God because I've had some experiences here. Every place I go, someone talks to me about meat ministry. Mm. Everywhere. And I've been quite a few places mm. for the short time I've been out of here. And get a chance to lift it up and lift up Christ. I thank God for the ministry. And may God continue yeah. to strengthen it where it's weak. Amen. And where it's strong, make it stronger. Amen. Amen. You know, I met a lady at the anchor at the, um, the airport. The, um, the Ark. Ark, Ark yeah. Encounter. Two ladies yeah. ministered to them there. One said to me, we were talking and talked for a long time. And she told me that she's seen her money problems. She's a nurse and so on. A lot of problems. But her daughter comes to her all the time. The goes, yeah. Her daughter comes to talk to her. Mm -hmm. And she was she sure it is her daughter. And I'm telling you, I thank God for the ministry and the training that I've received here. I, was, I didn't want to hurt her feelings. Because I saw how deeply she believed it was, it is her daughter and not nothing else. Hmm. And I said, I, I, I don't want to break that because that's her comfort. Yeah. Yeah. I, said, I look at Donna and I said, what shall I do? Hmm. I said, Lord, I learned that here. Send up a little prayer. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be long. Two words. Lord, help, help me. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her in her eyes and I said, listen. It was not your daughter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you sit in the back? <laughs> it she was not God. your daughter. <laughs> God, God, she missed you. She missed you. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Sister Brown. Go ahead, God, finish up. And I went to the Bible and showed her why it was not her daughter. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. She said, really? Come on now. I thank God for the teachings mm. here. I really thank God. It's all right. I really thank God. Mm -hmm. And I thank him for the prayers of all the saints. Amen. Including you. <laughs> we'd, like, we'd, like to say, <clears throat> we'd like to thank our family for joining us this evening. We got an amen to that, Cobbs. Uh, this is so heartfelt. Remain faithful people of God. Thank you, Maria. God's good. All right. We got time for one more, and then we got Brunella. Praise God for all his blessing and for this beautiful meat family. Please keep my, my and my family in your prayers. May we be blessed with the knowledge of his soon coming. Amen. Amen to that. All right. We're going to move forward. So once again, uh, you, you have something to share. Come on now. Time is ticking. Moving with swift transition. Put your mic up to the mouth. Yeah, we got one time. We've been praising for about 30 minutes now. Come, come on. Good evening, brother. Thank you, Veronica. Good evening to you. Yeah, put, I just want to thank God for uh, giving us breath, um, giving us a second chance at life. Each Amen. breath we breathe Amen is a, another opportunity to get it right. Um. And I want to thank God for reuniting me with my other family. Mm -hmm. What's his name? No, no, no. I mean, all of I you. I know that. All What's his name that you've been talking about? What's his name? Well, I'm really Even glad at my to table see while you think. <laughs> <laughs> but no, not just him specifically. I understand but, that. You know, everybody. Um, and I want to thank God for his provisions. Amen. Um, we may not have everything we want. And we may not have it in the way that we may want it, mm -hmm. 
Mm. Um, but he is a provider um, as long as we are faithful. Absolutely. And I just want to thank him for that. Um, and uh, that's it. That's all right. We thank God. Uh, good evening to you, <coughs> Sister Parker. I'd like to take a brief moment also. we like to thank our family here. We have rallied together also <coughs> to contribute to the city mission. And uh, I tried to get a final count this evening, but we, we uh, a lot of phone calls came in, response came in today, and uh, we don't know what we, we got to be close over $70,000, and we are still moving forward. So I'd like to thank our friends out there who have also been so faithful calling in, and those who call in and donate it for the uh, home study course and those who do not want to pass it on someone else. And <clears throat> even though this is the last day, as we say, so I did call the owner of the place and spoke to him and told him our status yesterday. And he was so gracious and therefore he's not putting no pressure thus far on us. So therefore, those who are listening... Even though we got the window still open, we don't know when it's going to close. <laughs> and I will get a definite count tomorrow. I know we got to be close to 70 and maybe we need another, I don't know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 So you can still touch your friends and uh, let them know that we have, you know, God has given us favor with this individual. And that's my praise. He's given us favor. And therefore, <clears throat> when I talked to him yesterday, uh, he was to show no pressure. He wants us to have the place. Mm -hmm. He already went to the lawyer, got the papers already, already drawn up way before we started raising money. <laughs> the guy got more faith than some of us here. Amen. Amen. Already had the paper, way, paper made up. So anyway, so I just want to make that known, pass it on, that we still, even though December the 1st, we enter in, but we still have opportunity. And I, I thank God for those who felt the crunch today because we had a lot of phone calls. And I liked also, <clears throat> my family might be listening, my biological family, they have been tremendously responding to our calls. I had a call today from a sister-in-law, and they saw it on Facebook. So I thank God for the staff that's come up, donate our family out there, and my personal family, who definitely is contributing. And that's what I say is a blessing. When you got your family out there, not part of this package here, but was praying for us. So that's my praises. And um, I know there are those who are not enthusiastic about the city mission, uh, but uh, God has spoken. And he said, establish these outposts and work the cities from the outpost and establish facilities in the city to be a light there. And so we, we only follow what God told us to do. And he said, therefore, we have consecrated ourselves. He will make provision. I see that happening. All we did was just step out on the waters. As I'm praying for my fellow workers, I continue to pray for my, those who really see it. I also pray for the night visit. I had another night visit in prayer. So I thank you all for the night visits. <laughs> so Brother Cobb, a lot of things have been happening, a lot of challenges. But like I said, it's not about the material things. God's going to take care of that. You know, we thank God that we have a health center come, session come up, and we got more than the people. We got beyond our case and all financially able. We did a, a school promotion today for our school coming up in 2023 and we are looking for 14 students. We got eight students now and so our school will be started February, <coughs> February the 26th to June the 25th. So that would be another boost. And so if you know anybody who want to receive a training to become consecrated workers. We got folks in here went through the school. We encourage you. You got to, I think, January, January 9th or something to have your application in. So just contact us with the information you'll see on the screen. So we got a lot to be thankful for. We have not gone hungry. We have not gone shelterless. We have not gone closeless. 
And we still got family and that too. God will provide. He just, he, he dried up the well for a moment <laughs> to see who's going to stay in the boat and float. Amen. All right then. We're going to praise God for more time. Hey, praise God for more time. Veronica, thank you. Just touch some friends. <laughs> Tell them we just need maybe about 40 more people. That's all. Come on. 40 more people or whatever. Did I see a mic? All right, my dear. You want two minutes? One minute? I, I, I just love you. <laughs> put your yeah, mic up. She just gave me the mic anyway. Oh, put the mic up to your mouth, dear. But <laughs> I, too, want to thank God for <clears throat> what he's doing. Amen. Amen. And it's awesome to see <clears throat> how God works. You know, when we think of and read about the impossibilities being possible with our God, we can see it happening. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful to be a part. I am grateful for the messages to be changed inward so that the outward will be seen. Mm. And I thank him for my fellow workers. I thank him for my husband, my family. I thank him for the opportunity to just be able to be a praise for him mm -hmm. and be his hands, his feet, to be able to do this work because what we do for him matters for eternity and that um, he places us where he wants us to be. And even though we can't measure and say, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, but when we place God first and foremost, he places us where he would have us to be. Absolutely. And we're not going to see the end from the beginning. But if we could, we wouldn't have it any other way than the way he has led Amen. us. Amen. So I'm grateful to be a part of this work. I'm grateful to see the hand of God moving. And I'm excited hmm. to see what's going to be in the end. That's right. Amen. And praise God. Amen. We're on the fruit of the Spirit. Oh, yeah. Not Cobb, Cobb. We're glad, glad to see Cobb. Brother Cobb back. Brother, huh? Brother Cobb, well, I was going to call you last, today. She always called me Cobb. Yeah. Last, Cobb. Uh, yes, I, talk, I talked about you this morning, and I asked my husband had he talked to you, and he said, no, leave Cobbs alone. He's on his honeymoon. <laughs> that's right. I said, uh, uh, I said amen. well, that's all right. Don't be he calling. may be, but we need to check on him and no, see I don't if need he's to all check right. On. All right. He said, all right, but anyway. But anyway, we're glad to see you and see all you right. in the land of the living. Amen. All right. We are on the fruit of the spirit. We're on the number eight fruit. We got one more fruit. So let's open up our Bibles. Father, just guide us in the reading and understanding of your word. Galatians chapter five. We're going to read verse. I'm going to read verse 22 to 26. Galatians chapter five, verses 22 to 26. The fruit of the spirit. The Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And verse 26 says, let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. The fruit of the Spirit. Philippians 3, 13 and 14 said, God said, I, he said, I press towards the mark, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The high calling. Once again, higher than the highest human thought can reach. Is God's idea for his children. Godliness, God likeness is the goal to be reached. Now remember, as we interact outside of the prayer time and the other time, if we can keep in view and focus that the reason we're studying these very precious fruit is because God wants us to reach a standard of godliness. It's a high calling. High calling. 
impossible for you and I. We know that. John 15, 5 said, without me, we can do nothing. But if we can keep in view, because as I said many times, three Ds. Anybody know about the three Ds? Three Ds. Destination. Destination. Destination, what kind of after destination? Direction. Direction, then decision. So our destination is reached by the direction we take based on the decision we make. So therefore, if we set a goal, and this goal, as far as our eternal goal, is godliness. That's the goal, right? And so it will dictate the path that we're going to follow. So we're not going to go in a way where it's going to distract us, whether we go to the bar, the saloon, or pornography, or whatever the case may be. Do you understand what I'm saying? The direction, the path, and the decision, that means our choices will be precipitated by the goal. By the goal. Since that's my goal, I must make decision that will fit that goal. And I must keep my face in the book, fellowship, and then so forth. So we have studied over and over. Righteousness is holiness, likeness to God. God is love. As I mentioned before, we find that righteousness is holiness and likeness to God. Then we go down. It says here, it is conformity to the law of God. For all thy commandments are righteousness. Now, love is fulfilling. Love is the fulfilling of the law. So the commandments of God are the fruit. The law is the root. Did you get that? You can keep the commandments and go to hell. You can keep the Sabbath, whatever you want to. But if you don't have that love, you're not going nowhere. Because that is the motivating factor. The Bible says that faith work it by love. Therefore, love is the motivating factor so love is fulfilling the law. So therefore, if I want to fulfill the law. I so said, Lord, I need your love. We talked about that. That's the fruit of the Spirit. That's the embodiment of Christ. Righteousness is what? Love. Righteousness, it says holiness. So we got that love, we have holiness. Now that sounds so simple. Hmm? Right. Repeat it again. Love is the root. No, 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 no. Yeah, love is the root. And keeping the love, love is the root, and commandments are the fruit. Huh? Root. Fruit. Root. Fruit. Root. Fruit. What's the root? Love. love. I have no tree around here. Oh, yeah. Why don't you say something, gardener? <laughs> Here's a tree. <laughs> now, they just said it's a tree. It is bedded in some soil if it's a real tree. Are you following what I'm saying? If it was not in the soil, it's going to wither up. And these leaves are the fruit. You get what I'm saying? Commandments are the fruit. Love is the root. Love is the very source that flows from our heart, bring forth obedience. Fruit. The commandments are the fruit. Therefore, True obedience flows from a heart filled with God's love. Yes, sir. Well, the teacher, when we look at the law, and we look at the love. Microphone. Keep that next to him. Right there. She got one. <laughs> when we look at the law and we look at the love, they are inseparable. Inseparable. Look what it says. Inseparable. Right here. Because. But the law cannot save us. No. But then why keep it? But the point is, is that, let's look at this. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Simple as that. It is that the law is the fulfilling of salvation. It says love is the fulfilling of the law. It says here, righteousness is holiness, and righteousness is likeness of God. And then you go down here, righteousness is love. So therefore, it's simply a common denominator if we get the love of God it's going to flow spontaneously from our heart, obedience. You so don't can try we to be, just keep go be loving? Well, you, you can't be loving. That's why we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit. That love is a gift. 
from God. But if that love from God is in you, you'll keep the law. Naturally. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. Not begrudgingly. You know how we sit in church every Sabbath? Even it's tough to go into church on Sabbath. It's, it's a grudging thing. I got to do it because it's a duty. I'm obligated. God don't make us obligated. If that love is in my heart, it's going to be a pleasure and joy. Anytime that we're serving God and keeping, being obedient to him and there's no joy in it, then there's no love there. You cannot be without joy when God's loving your heart and serving him. That's what I tell my wife. There's no way. You, you cannot be in Christ and Christ in you. And when challenges come, you begin to become despondent. And when you do become despondent, then you got to check your connection. Say, Lord, forgive me for this because I have lost my connection. So you're saying there's no room for depression? No, sir. That's right. No room. Well, there's some terrible situation that but, doesn't get you done. But let me share you with you. When you go back to the book of Genesis, when you talk about mental health, then we're going to move on speedy. When you talk about mental health. Now, remember, God created perfect man. Sound mind. Sound spirit. And when he lost his mind, when he lost his mind, how did he lose his mind? He refused or rejected the counsel of God and rendered his obedience to Satan. And when he did that, you see in the book of Genesis all the symptoms of depression, shame, blame, guilt, fear. You get what I'm saying? Those are the root of a heart disconnected from God. And that is the concept, and that can be put in practical terms. And so, well, we, don't, teacher, we don't have to stay long on that, but what no. you're saying there, we have to be careful with that. How do you account for the people that are in mental institutions and so on? And, and well, we account for them because... You, you, you're saying that, but look at out there. Yeah, we account... You remember, How do you account for that? You remember this. Yeah. Let me say this, because there's folks listening may not understand the statement, but if there was no sin, would that be mental illness? If that were no sin? No. Would that be cancer? No. Diabetes? No. None of that. Would you say so? Yeah. All right. So what's the root of all of our sickness? It's sin. I'm not saying that people out there are sinning against it, but that's what it is. So when we are facing these diseases, since Satan is the originator of sickness. Did anybody hear me out here? Satan is the originator of sickness sickness. Therefore, the physician, whoever it is, is not warned against the sickness. They warn against a power that's outside of their realm. So you're saying the patients cannot get well? Unless the mind is restored to, to Christ. That's right. So that physician, whoever it may be, must have a connection with Christ. Otherwise, he's going to take the pill that will be a substitute to cure the ill. And there's no pill that can cure ill. You can deal with the symptoms. So there is no cure for mental illness. Except for the mind to be restored. To Christ. That's right. And anyone call me on the rug for that, I'll stick by this word you right here. you got to be careful with that, Dr. Johnson. I'm not going to care. I'll be bold about it. Right here. God did not give us a mind of fear, but a sound mind. The only way, how do I know? I sit every day, I'm coaching folks. I'm sitting across my desk, I'm coaching, I'm listening intently. And I know the problem. You don't say, well, son, well, you got a problem because you've disconnected with Christ. I'm not saying that's where you communicate, but I know the source. And then when I begin to get specific and draw it on the paper, I can see what's going on. I'm going to talk about Christians now. You remember a statement that says, Christians with anxious hearts. That's a statement I shared before. Christians with anxious hearts. The reason Christians have anxious hearts is because they have not made a complete surrender to Christ. And unless they make that surrender, they cannot have peace. And that's not some theory I read. That is because of my own personal experience with this. Hmm? So therefore, yes, righteousness. Now, here's the simple very simple. Salvation is simple. But we're not. It says the righteousness of God. Here we put this up. 
is embodied in Christ. We receive righteousness. Go back. Righteousness is what? Likeness of God. We receive holiness, likeness of God. We receive Christ. So your job, my job as Christians, like I pray every morning, say, Lord, you connect me with somebody that you want me to connect with Christ. It has not failed yet. Even today, it has not failed yet. So your job, my job as Christians is to be praying, Lord, put me in a pathway. Just like, you know, you're there visiting you know, down the ark. The woman stayed there, huh? That was God bringing your path across that weary soul. And what did you do? You took the word of God and connected her to Jesus. What did she say? Is that right? Do you get what I'm saying? That's what God is all about. That's what happened. Therefore, the fruit of the Spirit. Building a godly character. Meekness. Number eight fruit. Now remember, when Christ come into your life in John 15, he does not come and bring one fruit. Then another fruit. He brings all the fruit into our lives. However, those fruit must be perfected. John 15, 2. Christ said, Again, some familiar. John 15, 2. You put your face in the book. John 15, 2. So every branch of me that does not bear fruit, I take it away. Keep that in mind. If God don't see fruit in your life, my life, he can't, he can't use us. In the same verse, he said, every branch in me that bear fruit, what does it say? He purged it that it what? More fruit. You see, it's going to be this, these attributes of God. And now we have read, we'll get to that. Huh? We'll get to it before I'm overstepping real quickly. Because. Teacher, before you get up speed. Listen. <laughs> then. How many times are you going to purge us? Until, <laughs> until Cobb, when you look in the mirror, you don't see Raphael Cobb no more. You see Jesus. But. And, and now I want you to pause. Sometimes there's I, no break in the project. That's right. I want you, you remember what I said? You remember you said, you know, because I, I tend to be repetition in my message. You said, you know, you're just not getting it. And I said this week, because as I think Dennis and I was talking, and I shared with this group about a pastor. This pastor gave his sermon four times every Sabbath. And the people said, this guy must not understand the word of God because he's repeating the same thing over and over again, four times. And then the pastor said, I will t give you a new message when I see these messages producing in your life the fruit. Amen. So I'm not going to quit repeating my message Amen. until God sees some fruit. Well, then you, then you, you go somewhere else and hear some new messages. Sometimes you sound redundant. Uh, I, that's what it is. <laughs> Repetition, deeper the impression. I mean, we, when he shared that with me, it hit me clear. I said, man, I'd be praying and looking at, you know, I, I'd be letting the people dictate. I said, these folks need something to stimulate their mind. Let me find. <laughs> when that brother told me that, I said, oh, thank you, God, for relieving the stress off my life because that's clear as day. When I see it in my life, see it in your life on this campus, then I move forward to a new message. Hello out there. Amen. <laughs> That was like to me, Carl. What do you think about that? He said it's redundant. Then, but you didn't hear his testimony. You came in late. He said, thank God for it. Because he sees some fruit. And I see some fruit too. You got it, Carl? <laughs> he, he getting it. <laughs> All right, let's move forward. Let's move forward. Now, in Colossians 1, 10 to 13, it says God wants us to be fruitful. Just write it down. He wants us to be fruitful. Fruitful. Here in Christ, objects, page 67, paragraph 1. Christ, listen to what it says. Christ is seeking to reproduce himself in the hearts of men, as well as women. And he does this through those who believe in him. Now, what is this in the red? What does it say, folks? It says the object of the Christian life is fruit bearing. The reproduction of Christ's character in the believer that it might be reproduced in others. Did you get that? Good evening. Jesse. 
All right, let's read it again before we disturb. <laughs> before we dis- I mean, before we were honored by a present. It says the object of the Christian life is fruit bearing. What it means, the object of the Christian life? What's the object of the Christian life? What does it mean? Huh? The very purpose is for me to, for Christ to produce those fruit in my life that it may be what? Reproduce in others. So, brother teacher, the word is used bearing. What is the difference between bearing fruit and producing fruit? Well, the branch does not produce. It bears. The vine produces and the branch bears. So bearing, producing, two things. So like, like a lady with, with a baby in her tummy, she doesn't produce the child. She bears the child. She's bearing a child. But she doesn't produce the child. They take other souls to produce that. Yeah. Only God. Well, yeah, you take that human being and drop that sperm in there and send the 300,000 down through that channel. <laughs> Navigate it. But she could only bear the child. She's she bearing it. Produce the child. She's carrying it. That's fruit of her loins. Bearing. Because Jesus said, listen to God, he said, from me is that fruit found. Christ is the suit, I mean the source in which we bear fruit. It says, in bringing forth fruit, those haven't heard the word. Keep it. We'll bring forth fruit in obedience. The word of God. The word of God received into the soul will be manifest in good works. His results will be seen in a Christ-like character and life. Christ said to himself, I delight to do thy will. O oh my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me, John 5, 30. And the scripture says, he that said he abided in him ought himself also so walk even as he walked. So if we abided in Christ, he in us, are we not going to walk as he walked? That's what it says. Experience the humility of Christ, of Jesus. Philippians 2, 5 through 9. Throughout his earthly pilgrimage, we're talking about the humility of Christ. He, in calling to John 6, 52, Luke 4, 22 and 30, John 7, 7, John 7, verse 1 through 5, Matthew 12, 24, John 19, 1 through 3, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, Isaiah 59, 2, Isaiah 13, 9. We find John 19, 30. Up here, he is misunderstood. He's rejected. He's hated. He's mocked by family members. He's considered possessed by the devil, beaten brutally. He sensed the penalty of sin. And killed. Now turn with me to John chapter 13. Somebody read verse 1. And yet, all of this he experienced. All of this. And what does John, raise your hand, what does John 13, 1 says? It says put, put, get the mic. It says, John 13, 1 says, mm. now before the put feast. Put them up to your mouth, close. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that, His hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Mm -hmm. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Unto the end. In spite of all of this, he loved us to the end. Amen. Amen. We find in Matthew 11, 28, 30, the Bible says here, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your soul. Christ is the embodiment of meekness. True humility, according to Isaiah, ages, page 535, implicit belief. Do you know what I mean by implicit belief? The word implicit. Anybody know what that word means? Without a reservation. Without a reservation. Solid. Implicit belief in Christ's word is true humility. True self-surrender in his word. In his word. We have five, four points of humility. Humble ourselves towards God. Humble ourselves in our perception of our own selves, how we see ourselves. 
We find humble ourselves in regard to the circumstances, whether good or bad. Humble ourselves in our relationship with other people. So humble ourselves towards God. Humble ourselves in how we view ourselves. Humble ourselves in our relationship with other people. And humble ourselves in regard to the circumstances of life, whether good or bad. When circumstances take place in my life, circumstances become my helper. Do you know your circumstances become your helper? Now, two people shaking their head. Do you know how that takes place? Now, some folks here got a blank stare. They don't see circumstances being your helper. Let's not go any further until we get this now. What do you think about that, Sister Gina? Hmm? Circumstances become your helper. What do you think about that? I see you processing that. What about you, Keisha? Circumstances. You know what circumstances are? All right, let's define circumstances real quick. What are circumstances? Just everything that happens around us. Around us. This situation happened around you today? There's something, a circumstance took? I know in my life, sure did today, huh? Could you think of circumstances that took place in your life today? Circumstances. Now, how can they become our helper? How can circumstances, these, Mike over there, how can these circumstances become your helper? Mm-hmm. Like a situation where uh, someone is, is uh, if you have an account and someone is frauding that account, mm-hmm. that's the circumstance. Put the mic. That's yep. the circumstance. If somebody fraud or going into that account taking mm-hmm. money, that's a circumstance. That's right. Now, <laughs> if I don't pay attention of that circumstance, then it's not going to help me to stop it. <laughs> if you don't, what's that again if now? If I don't pay attention to pay my attention account. Or to your account. Okay. On that circumstance, okay. that will continue to go we'll continue. on. Gotcha. And I won't be able to stop. Right. So it helps me to, to recognize that that process is out there, that I must be aware mm. of those circumstances where I would, Right. Run my so that circumstance will make you more keenly aware of that situation, right? Right. Where that's not repeated. That's a good example. So it helps work- me now to stay focused right. into that account to make sure that that's not happening. Right. Now let me ask this. How would that play in a spiritual situation? Circumstance. Give me a spiritual situation that would impact your spiritual life, if you understand what I'm saying. It says, help our character, whether to become more patient. Yes, it does. Anybody can think of a circumstance in your life that tests your spirit? Mm-hmm. You want to share? Okay. Put your mic up there quickly. Go ahead. Sometimes uh, in relationships, I've, I've experienced in re- what? Re- relationships. In relationships, okay. I've experienced what I call um, sandpaper people, maybe mm-hmm. customers that have come in the store. Now, now hold on a minute. Define that for our audience. Someone, Keep mic- that's, yeah. someone that's difficult. Okay, let me stop because they're here. Sandpaper people. Now, what is a sandpaper person? It just means it's kind of rough to be they're able rough. to communicate with them. All right, go ahead. They're whatever. They maybe have some issues, um, and you can just tell. You can almost feel it. Okay. But that circumstance gives me the opportunity. Mm-hmm. It gets my attention. gives me the opportunity to make a difference. With give the Lord's you an opportunity help, to what? To make a difference with make the Lord's difference. help in that person's situation. Why not get irritated with them? That only make, makes Why it not worse. Why not become sandpaper yourself? Mm-mm. So you're saying that gives you an opportunity to make a difference in their life. Mm-hmm. What do you think about that, y'all? Now I know you're shaking your head because you're going to have some circumstances starting tonight and tomorrow. <laughs> That's a good point. Huh? So let us not, like I said, let's not be bemoan the circumstances that we see on both sides. We got to say, Lord, you said circumstances become our helper. As he mentioned, as she mentioned, we need to look through those lens, how this situation can help me to grow in grace, to truly reflect Christ, being caregiver, being a caregiver, circumstances. 
and how God wants you to give care for the folks you are not caregiving. Because those folks you're giving care can be really a character, can really be sandpaper. <laughs> Amen. Let's move on quickly. The word of God often comes in collisions with man's hereditary and cultivated traits. We'll get to a part of this. We'll probably finish up part two on Friday because we did so much testifying. It's good because I know our time slipped away. The word of God often comes in collision with man's hereditary and cultivated traits of character and his habits of life. You know what I mean? Come in collision. When the word of God comes to me, it's definitely going to collide with my temperament, my spirit, and my way of doing things. Like now, we see in a ministry, we see there's growth time. And the growth to us is painful because it requires some changes that we must make or some adjustments we must make. You get what I'm saying? And many times we will fight those adjustments and those changes and we'll say we got to keep it where it is and nothing stays the way it is. Even if you keep Fruit on your table for weeks is not going to stay when you first put it on there. It's going to rot. Brother Teacher, the only thing that's prominent is change. Hmm. Hmm. What y'all think about that? What y'all think about the brother teacher saying that? Only thing he said, he said, only thing that's permanent, only thing that's permanent, he said, is change. Everything I mean, else You said permanent or prominent? The only thing that's permanent, permanent is change. It's change. Everything changes except change. Mm -hmm. Change is the only constant we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And then you take it to a whole new level, because you're absolutely right. There's one person that does not change. God. He's same today, yesterday. yesterday, forevermore. So therefore, if we're going to deal with this, we got to be in him to keep us from being affected by the so-called changes and circumstances. Because it says here, his habits, his customs, habits and customs, what we're accustomed to, and practices are brought into submission to God's word. So we always have to check our habits, our customs, everything, and bring it in contact with God's word. Does God approve this? I remember we got in conversation with somebody, and they was definitely basing on the Habits of life. Um, this is the way I used to do it. Christian. But it says here, you got to bring it into submission to God's word. In his view, the commands of finite every man sink into insignificant besides the word of God. That means when I bring my habits in con contact with the word of God, it says here, every man sink into insignificance here beside the word of the infinite. God, with the whole heart, with undivided purpose, he is seeking the life eternal. And at the cost, listen to this, at the cost of loss, persecution, or death itself, he will obey the truth. That's where God got to bring us before he take us home. <laughs> hmm? That's why he got to bring us. Through conflict, the spiritual life is strengthened. Through what? Again, let conflict not discourage you. We, we come in conflict. We're going to have conflict. We have it in meetings. We have it on campus. We're going to have conflict. That, don't fear conflict. The only problem with conflict, when you're so proud with the position you take, that's when you are making a mistake. If you see the conflict as an opportunity, it says through conflict, the spiritual life is strength. How, once again, how does conflict strengthen my spiritual life? How does conflict strengthen? Give me an example of conflict. What is a conflict? Talk to me. Come on now. One thing about our prayer, man, you can talk back. Come on. Because if you can't tell me, then therefore you don't understand what I'm talking about. Now, what is conflict? What about you all out there listening on stream? Tell me what conflict is. Since these folks in here are dead, tell me out there. You're alive. <laughs> so I just woke y'all up. What is conflict? Hmm? Got a mic. Got a mic. Get a mic. 
Get a mic back there. Come on. Conflict. Praise God. Like the um, person was saying about the sandpaper people. Uh -huh. When you start getting roughed and rubbed by those sandpapers, you see your character and, and you can see how it measures against God. Therefore, when you run into that sandpaper disposition, it brings out of you some hidden traits in your character. And as you say, the Lord has been good to you. You look for opportunity to help. But when that old woman is still on the throne, your response will be all wrong. Hmm? Conflict is not going to strengthen your character. You see, conflict is essential, indispensable. <laughs> Don't frown like that. Just say praise God. <laughs> But I know it's hard, it's hard to say because we, we, we avoid conflict. And you cannot avoid conflict. Know why you can't avoid conflict? Because you can't avoid yourself. So when you're in conflict, you're going to run away and self is just behind you. <laughs> Hello? Because self is, is not responding. Self is reacting. Keep that in mind. You cannot run from yourself. You are the conflict. Cause, come on, some move Brother on. Teacher, sometimes you make the Christian life so difficult. Like it's... it's <laughs> Like, you can't overcome it. Everything you talk about is trouble in our lives. Have mercy. When are you going to talk about something that, that, yeah. Is, yeah. that is bearable? That's right. Well, that's what I say, Cobb. When you were saying when? that, I had flashback to Calvary. Oh. Why everything has to be so difficult I, 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 and Christ I, died for us? That's what I'm saying. But I had a flashback. Why things were so difficult for him? Why the world was railed against him. Even his close friends, 12 disciples, why one chose to kiss him as a sign that he is the one and put him to death? Why did they say crucify him? Why it was so unbearable to him? And yet he did not break. Yet he gave his example how conflict strengthened his character. So I can't do nothing else but talk about what I see in Jesus. But not only that, I thank Jesus because all the conflicts I've been involved with and continue to be involved with. No, I, but sometimes you talk like we cannot go through one day in peace. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cobb, I tell you, man, I used to, I used to Welcome think... Back. <laughs> yeah, but Cobb, but he raised a good... I'm serious. He raised a good question. Don't he raise a good question? Yeah. Does he raise a question? Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be nice... 24 hours, no riff rat, no sandpaper, no disappointment. Let's be serious. I mean, I, I could remember times I spent a day at meat and I didn't have all this disaster you're talking about. Yeah. Is that right? When I, I go back home and I reflect on the day I said, I never spent a day at meat ministry in 35 years that has not been some irritation, sandpaper, and disappointments. That's why I'm growing in grace. Woo! Spiritual manure. Spiritual manure. Conflict. Trials. Spiritual manure. All right. That's it. Cops. Every day? You need it, man. Romans 7.23. Paul said, I see another law, but I see a law in my members. The law of sin. So the law of sin is in my DNA. Hmm? You, that's right. Now, in 21 more days, man, I'll be 75. 75 years, man. In your DNA, I need conflict. So you're asking for it. <laughs> No, I don't ask. So you're asking for trouble. I said, Lord, that's right. I said, Lord, I thank you for the pruning. Because I go to 15, 2 of John. He said, for every branch of me that bear fruit, I'm going to purge it. And I know God is not going to purge anywhere where he does not see fruit. So if you're being purged, you should be praising God. Because God sees some fruit. And he want to produce all those fruit. So instead of me praying, Lord. Now, I read another statement some time ago. It says many Christians pray for deliverance from suffering. 
and not sin. Because suffering is the fruit. Sin is the root. It's just like us in the very symptomatic or symptoms treating. Huh? We want to get rid of the pain, but we don't do, want to go down to the deep root of what causes my pain. We want to put a bandage over. I do not want to bandage religion. I had that for 38 years. Putting bandage over it. Then when you peel it off, it got a scab. Hmm? Are you with me? So yes, now in the midst of the trouble, in the midst of the situation, you will have peace, man. You don't get what I'm saying. You got to experience that. That when you are into conflict and when you are faced with these trials and tribulation, you don't have to put a frown on your face and, and ask people to talk and act in sandpaper. And when that conversation go on, you know what you need to do? Say, hey, pause. We need to pray. And we need to take a break and come back later. You get what I'm saying? We had conflict since you've been gone, man. Wow. You missed some of the conflict out there honeymooning. I'm glad I did. Hmm? <laughs> you had something to say before I move on. I was just thinking that part of what helps me in this process of dealing with conflict in our lives is to remember, <laughs> to remember why we're here. Amen. Now let me right. Go ahead, Mark. Let me. Uh, Cobbs, somebody sympathize with you. Amen. I agree with brother teacher. We need some hope sometimes. <laughs> That's our friend Frankie Parker. You need to come back to meet men and get beat up some more. <laughs> we had less conflict. <laughs> All right, now, be careful. <laughs> My only objective is being called accuser when calling out bad behavior of others. All right, Veronica, you're called accuser. Now, it's how you call out the bad behaviors, bad behavior of others. So Satan is accuser of the brother. You might want to give gentle rebuke or correction. It's how your spirit profess that. All right? Mm -hmm. Conflict and active disagreement between people with opposing opinion or premise. Thank you for your philosophical definition. Very good. <laughs> Conflict helps to produce the fruit that the vine is looking for in us. Amen. That's my niece, Carolyn Hart. Very good comment. All right, can we move forward? We, we shall. Oh, yes. Yeah. Through conflict, the spiritual life is strengthened. Trials will be born. Trials well born will develop mm, steadfastness of character and precious spiritual graces. The perfect fruit of faith, meekness and love often matures best amid storm clouds and darkness, Cobb. If there's no storm in your life, these fruits are not going to be perfected. Hello out there. So do not walk around here complaining about the conflict and the storm. Say, Lord, your grace is sufficient. Give me grace. Give me grace to run the race. Because, brother teacher, what I'm getting to understand is if God <laughs> takes us to it, he will take us. He's going to take us through it. Amen. Somebody said. He's going to take us through it if he takes us to that's it. That's right. He's going Absolutely. to take us through it. That's right. You know, Carl, I think our screen is, is, is breaking off. People are saying, haven't heard brother teacher in a while. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> you, see how, you see how you miss, man. <laughs> Thank you. I hear you, Doc. No band-aid religion. We have to have some balance here. Yes, balance. What you call balance? No conflict, little conflict. The balance comes when Christ is in the heart. He will give you the balance because, brothers and sisters, you cannot really experience what peace is unless you go through darkness. That's when God sees. It's in darkness. It's in darkness that God brings forth treasure. So the balance is the fact you're in Christ. I mean, somebody ain't studying the life of Christ around here. Somebody ain't studying the life of Christ. Because mostly, it's good to raise this question, but most of these answers will be, if you behold Christ, that's what I'm saying. The way we study the Bible is like reading the Bible 
as something that is so formal and we're not understanding what we're reading. The life of Christ is a reflection of the Christian who is after him. And what kind of life did Christ live is the kind of life we must live by his grace. Conflict is like a vehicle. Where are you going? Like, where are you going? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's move on. Yet, none can develop these graces except through the process of growth and fruit bearing. Our part is to receive God's word. Our part is to receive God's the truth. Receive it. To receive God's word and hold it fast. Yielding ourselves fully to his control. Fully to the control of God's word. And what is it? And its purpose in us will be accomplished. It didn't say might be. Probably. It said it will be accomplished if we hold fast to the word. When we are shaken even to our boots, we hold tenaciously to the word of God. Let's go to the one other point on meekness. Then we pick up those who join us this Friday. So we've gone a long way. We've talked about love. We've talked about joy. We've talked about peace. We've talked about long suffering, gentleness. We've talked about goodness, faith, and now meekness. And our last fruit will be temperance. So let's look at a few other points on meekness before we close out. We got about maybe 15 minutes. Meekness is a fruit of the Spirit of God. So what is the meaning of meekness? Mild of temper, soft, gentle, not easily provoked, irritated, yielding, given to forbearance under injuries. Now the man Moses was very meek above all men, approximately humble in evangelical, evangelical senses, submissive to the divine will, not proud, self-sufficient or refractory, not peevish and apt to complain of divine disposition. Christ said, learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest. Now, I have a handout I will give you to Brother go over this, all right? So you don't have to take notes. I got a handout. Got a handout. Brother Teacher, I would like to really, you know, grasp the, the, the meaning of meekness. Because um, it's a very challenging word and, 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 and a cha very challenging <coughs> you know, character or uh, aspect of a character to, to portray because in this evil world people just take so much unfair advantage of you when mm -hmm. you try to be that's true nice. and also to help us with that because someone speaks soft you can, you, they're whispering all the time, or because they walk soft, or they show some type of um, piety. Mm -hmm. How does that yeah. correlate with meekness? Yeah. Let me go what on. Is real true <laughs> meekness. Well, be because people are we'll afraid that. to be meek oh, because sure, sure, they're going to sure. be beaten up. Oh, sure. Now, I might not get it to Dave because we're at but it's in here. Let me go on with the little time we got, all right? I got you. Because meekness can be looked at as being weakness. Right? That's what you're saying? Yeah. All right then. All right. Now, listen what now bless are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now the meek shall inherit the earth. We find in meekness, softness, share with you, humility, the meekness of Christ. Meekness is a grace which Jesus alone inculcated, and which no ancient philosopher seems to have understood or recommended. No philosopher understand. It's inculcated in Christ. <clears throat> is meekness the same as humble? Meekness has been contrasted with humility alone in so much as humility, listen, Cobb, alone as in so much as humility simply refers to the attitude towards oneself. A restraining of one's own power so as to allow room for others. Do you understand what I just said? Repeat it. All right. <clears throat> It says here, humility simply refers to an attitude, disposition toward oneself, how we view ourselves, a restraining of one's own power, so restraining of my power, my ability, so as to allow room for others. 
Did anybody get that statement? Oh. Did anybody get that statement? Uh, it's my attitude, how I view myself, all right? Because I can be hum- all puffed up. It's how I view myself as allowing room for the other person. Allowing room. What do you mean allowing room for the other person? You had to retail that for me. I ain't okay. Getting... Now remember, <clears throat> people come in, look at you, meet you, weak. They begin to communicate with you some very irritating words about you. Hmm? And you are definitely prone to check them, defend yourself. But it says here, meekness, humility is your perception of yourself and leaving room for others. That means, as Margaret brought out, that sandpaper <clears throat> in the store, sandpaper. That's why she's very qualified by God's grace to be thrust down there in the city mission. <laughs> with some help, but anyway. And so she was rubbed. Follow my saying? Now, what did she say? She was seek the opportunity to show forth Christ to that person. She had the power in herself to check that person. Say, sir, you don't have to speak to me like that. You know, I'm here to serve you. You don't have to say the word. Is, that, is it wrong to say that? From a human perspective, no. You just go to hell with it. That's all. So if you tell the person that is wrong, if she said no, that, it's the person, where you do it. Terms. I don't have to tell him that. I don't have to tell him. I well, let is Christ. Is it wrong to tell him that? What did Christ do? No, no. Is it wrong to? I'm going to ask. Christ did not defend himself. <clears throat> Are you taking that too Christ far? Christ did not. I, 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 is it wrong to tell the I have person, answered your sir, question. I you answer, don't have to speak to I me. I answer your manner. question. Is that wrong? Is that sinful? Christ did not defend himself. Is that a defense? Christ did not. All right, let's go back to Margaret. Let's go back to Margaret. Sandpaper customer. Irritating customer that can call from you a reaction towards the person. Says, sir. I do not accept your behavior. And I'm not going to stand here while you insulted me. Show me in the word where Christ would do that. If she said, so you don't have to talk to me this way. Show me in the word where Christ, even other words, to defend himself. I don't see that as a defense, Brother Jackson. That's not a defense. I love this. I love it. <laughs> so, I'll be finished. I'll be finished, Dennis. Go ahead. So kind of piggyback. Put it up. Put it up. P- so, piggyback. That's why those pigs going to be burnt. <laughs> put it up so, there. <laughs> you better get off that pig. <laughs> put it up there. I'm telling you. Barbecue. That fire going to be hot. But wait, wait, wait. Don't, do, wait, don't wait, fall wait. a multitude <laughs> to do evil. Okay, wait. So how do you... How do you maintain a Christian attitude without enabling a person's behavior? Ah, did y'all hear that? No, some of y'all don't understand that language. Enabling. See, that's the problem. So you only enable a person. Say a person keeps coming to you asking for money. Mm-hmm. All right? You give them money one time, then they come back for more money. Huh? Mm-hmm. That's not, so you keep, now you keep giving them money to spend on what? You enable them. That's the enable. When a person confronts you, confronts you like they confronted her. Mm-hmm. And by you taking a Christ-like spirit, you know what's that going to do? Christ want to demonstrate his redeeming love through you to that soul. And you cannot be redempted by defending yourself, thinking psychologically. That's why this biblical laws of the mind, because we have been shaped by our education and by the views of the world, enabling. We got to put in a proper respect. We talk about redemption that sandpaper customer need to see the love of God through that person who's being irritated I think we have to be realistic oh. I think if, if, if sister Margaret said so you don't have to speak to me in this fashion I'm here to help you what can I help you with is that a defense is that on Christ like is right. that on biblical let me ask you this I mean, let me ask you on, this. let's let me, get serious uh, let me ask you this let me ask you this why would she say those words? What prompt those words? Because of his behavior. I don't uh, see wait, wait, wait. The, be- the behavior, that's not it. 
there's a causative factor in the heart. Listen, because you ain't getting it, you ain't getting it. There's a causative, that's in the heart. Her response is out of the heart, her heart. There's something in her heart that brought those words out. And I've been talking about that. Say, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm, Dennis, I'm not, I'm going to repeat these messages until I see fruit. They're not aggressive words. They're not hurtful words. But listen to what I'm saying. You got to understand the heart, man. Why, what prompt that response? So you weren't here, and some of these folks were here, but they ain't got it yet. But you weren't here. I dealt with that heart, man. The thoughts. Our thoughts are shaped by circumstances. So when you are confronted with a sandpaper person based on your, 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 your past experience, your perception, you're going to address that. You're going to check that spirit. Put yourself in her place and address him. Let me know you're going to address him. Oh, I, uh, what I would do? I've been in that place. But, but, if the person irritate me, you know what I'm saying? I will just pause with this person. And especially give me an opportunity to say, sir, let us pray, even the store. I've done that. Yeah, you laughing. You know what happened? That person said, what? Let's pray. He ain't never heard nothing like that before himself. He comes. Uh, you, you ain't getting it. Anybody get what I'm saying? So for you, for everyone else. For everyone. That, that, that's one way I would do it. Now, I've been in a situation just recently. And therefore, you remember what you said there? On that heart, you remember, you threw up a two-second prayer. I have not got to the point where humility is power under control. That means you throw up a prayer, and you don't speak until God tell you to speak. Now, do you do that? Do you do that? When you're irritated, when you're sandpapered by a person, do you pause and throw up a prayer and don't say anything to God give you permission to talk. Talk to me. Hmm? I got to go. Hold your question. I got to go. Hold your question. You, you got to get it. Come on now. You got to go. Now, now I'm going to get to one point. I'm going to close out. Now listen to what it says here. Listen to get caught. Meekness, caught. Meekness is a humble attitude that expresses itself. Express itself in the patient endurance of offense. Margaret, you, you get that. I don't know if Cobb got that. I, I, no, no comments. No, I, I got to go, man. <laughs> Meekness, just, just wait, please. Patiently wait. <laughs> Meekness is a humble attitude that expresses itself in the patient endurance of offenses. Gentleness is a practical synonym. It implies mercy and restraint. You talk about uh, 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 self-restraint. You talk about definition. Meekness is not weakness. Sometimes we confuse the two. But the difference between a meek person and a weak person is this. A weak person can't do anything. A meek person, on the other hand, can do something but choose not to. Ooh, you ain't, somebody got to get that. This woman rubbed by sandpaper. Uh, person that came in the store. You, you know, human, you had to write this and say, sir, you, you know, you, 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 you're not very pleasant. She could have said that. Huh? But listen what it says here. A weak person, on the other hand, can't do, can do something. A meek person, on the other hand, can do something, but choose not to. She chose not to use her own words to put that man in place. Because that's deep in the heart. I know it is. When you and I are confronted with things like that, it comes out of our heart. Our reaction comes from a heart that is not connected at that time with Jesus Christ. Because we have not paused and threw up a prayer. Humility. I'm going to get to humility. Here it is right here. Meaning, bless are the meek. Jesus said, bless are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The word meek from the original language was used to describe reigning in a stallion. They, they break the stallion, the horse. It is the idea of a horse being controlled by a bit and a bridle. Control. The horse is chosen to submit to authority. That is meekness. It is power under constraint. When you got that bit in that horse, 
That horse is powerful. You know what I'm saying? You got that horse under control. There's constraint there. That's what meekness is. Let's go on further. Meekness is not weakness. It is power under control. As the writer of Proverbs said, he who is slow to anger, better than a mighty, and he who rules his spirit, than he who captures a city. Meekness. In contrast, the individual who is not gentle is likened to a city that's broken in two and without walls. You see the ticks. Gentleness always uses its resources appropriately. Unlike, unlike the out of control emotions that so often are destructive and have no place in your life as a believer. Comment on that, please. Which one? It said, in, in contrast, it says that we'll, 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 stop, we'll stop on this one too. Gentleness always always use his resources appropriately. Now, what resources? We, we talk about your ability, your power, what you have innately in you. You can use it for hurt or harm, just like the person irritating. I'll keep using that, irritating Margaret. So what about if you could crush them? Yeah, you can crush. You can crush them with the words. You can crush them with your fists. <laughs> huh? You can crush them with a gun. How many people go... How, that means it says gentleness always use resource appropriately. That means now where, where is the source of gentleness? Where is the source of gentleness? God's word. It's the fruit of the spirit. It's the embodiment in Christ. That means, Cobbs, it's so simple. That means if I'm out of character in my attitude and I'm not showing redemptive behavior, that means I'm out of Christ. That's the only way gentleness, gentleness to come in. I got to examine myself in life. Where am I in Christ? Am I abiding in him? Am I maintaining that abiding? Because he's going to produce the gentleness. So, so you are saying, Brother Teacher, in every situation we should ask, what would Christ do? Amen. Thou said it. Most definitely. But the point is that you and I must be very intentional whether we are Truly abiding. Every moment. Just like when, when you walk on the campus, man, when, that, when you step out of your door, come into the office, anything, man, you, you, you stepping into a war zone. And we got some wonderful people out here, but you stepping into a war zone. And that's not putting it bad, but that's just a reality. There are going to be some circumstances that are going to rub you like sandpaper, brother. Mm -hmm. So I not only have to be cognizant of the fact I got to be sure that I'm connected. And I would not start my day without being connected. Why get connected? Oh, on my knees. In the word of God. You got to get that manna. I said, oh, no. If you don't get that manna in the morning, as God told those Hebrews, don't get it before the sun, it's going to breed worms. If you don't get that manna, your life going to stink. You're going to walk around here perfuming the atmosphere with a stinking life. Hmm? Don't get that word. Be so busy being under Satan's yoke. Don't get the word. You'll find out. But you get that word. God said when that enemy come in like a flood, he'll raise up a standard. And the only way he can raise up that standard, that that word got to be indelibly in you. And I said over and over from this inspiration, it says, we must read this word and we must concentrate all of our energy on one verse until that verse become our very thoughts. We'll, we'll stop at this statement. That's what it means, resources. Where are my resources? Christ provides that. It says, gentlemen always use the resource appropriately. That means, as we go back to Mark, I love that, then that sandpaper customer start rubbing the resources you grab hold of Jesus, she paused. I don't know what she did, but I know she had to pause because out of the human heart is reactionary response and not responsible. You know that. When you're across, you're going to react. You're not going to sit and throw up a prayer and say, Lord, you tell me when to say something. Even for that moment, that, that sandpaper running, you know, you got to stay in the attitude of prayer. And while that person just run out, running, you know, at the mouth, you're not sitting there listening to him. You're throwing up a prayer and looking at him in his face. 
Lord, you tell me when to speak and what to say. Hmm? And will not God speak quickly to you in that situation? He will. Why do you call him son if I cost him? Well, choose another word. All right, let, let's use, let's, let me speak in behalf. Customers that come in with bad behavior, bad attitude. They rub you wrong. So they need an attitude adjustment, would you say. But she gave them a redemptive adjustment. Did I say, yeah. I would say, sir, look, hey, I got a solution to that concern you have. I would not stop and pray with them. That might chase them away or draw them. <laughs> As they come back and say, well, that woman behind the counter, she, she said, let's pray when I start showing ugliness to her. I guarantee you, you'll see a difference in those folks. It says here, unlike the out-of-control emotions that so often are destructive and have no place in your life. No place in the Christian life. And what it said, amen to that. Beautiful examples, man. Just like Donald brought out, you know, you learn from circumstance. Here, you also learn from spiritual lessons from your circumstances. We will pick up, find part two. We'll, is, we'll be quick. We've picked this up on Friday. Can I ask my question, please? Oh, I didn't know you had a question, dear. Um, Excuse me. Um, There's a mic. Oh. <laughs> um, I was pondering on Brother Cobb's um, question because in asking the person that's rubbing you the wrong way, I said, well, how does this apply when Jesus asked the guy, the um, officer who struck him? And he said, why? Um, why smitest thou me? Mm -hmm. So he asked him a question. That's right. I mean, so he was asking, is it wrong to, you know... Wrong to what? To reply the way that he was saying, why are you speaking to me like that? Or well, something. prompt the question of Jesus. Well, because he got, he got struck in uh, the way he was um, answering the question. I mean, it's right here in John chapter 18. I know what, I know what it says. Jesus, why are you striking me? What did he say? He said... If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the mm -hmm. evil. But mm -hmm. if well, why smitest thou me? Now, so you could say the same thing. If I have done something, why, you know, if I've done something for you to talk okay. to me that way. It's like Margaret said a customer come in and said, so if I've spoken evil to you, why speak evil to me, right? No, I was just wondering no, how no, you... No, no, um, lose that context. We yes. got to put it in a proper mm -hmm. context. It's like people say about Jesus going in that temple. Right. You got to understand the spirit that Christ had. Now, now, think with me clearly. Mm -hmm. Your reaction, my reaction in those circumstances is not the spirit of Christ. I agree. And Christ I did agree. not have the spirit of self in him. I agree. That's what you've got to understand clearly. I, I get that. I was just wondering. And you cannot apply that to that situation because the spirit that we're talking about is two different types of spirit. One is for defense of self. Mm -hmm. Brother, T Brother Tisha, we have to be careful. So you saying that we could only do that if we... If we if we, uh, if we respond to that person that way, it's a bad spirit. You got to ask God for permission to talk. Uh -huh. I just read it. I just showed in Jesus. No. So okay. Okay. It's good. In such a manner, you're, telling me it's a bad spirit. you're talking about Jesus, but the context, you got to understand the context. That's why I said we need to know how to study the Bible. The context will take a text and apply it to a situation that is not applicable because we are looking at it through a different spirit. When Jesus spoke, it was not about himself, man. But, you see, but if you say that, is, is, is that a bad spirit in you? Bad spirit of what? To put somebody in their place? I don't think that's putting the person in place at all. I think you're putting it out of the person. I'm sorry. You're not putting the person in place. Okay, what, what are you saying? You, what are you saying? He was saying if he was to ask the person, why are you talking to me? Yeah. Why are you so, you know, why are you speaking to me? So okay, can I, ask you, can I ask you all both a question? No, 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 no. I, can I ask you all a question? Why would you ask that question? What, what, why would you ask that question? We've got to get to the deep motives of our heart. And Jeremiah 17, we don't know our heart. That's why we're at this level. So what will prompt you to ask that question? What? <laughs> There's a different group. No, I'm just... 
is, is it? We, is it this should be continued if you and I live for Friday. Go ahead, Otis. <laughs> let Otis speak and we'll come back. Don't go on no honeymoon. Come back Friday, okay? <laughs> go ahead, Otis. Then we're going to close up. This right. has been good. You know, I would think that it is not so much the words spoken or not spoken, but the motivation behind why you speak. That's the point. Or why you're quiet. Absolutely. 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 Did you hit? Uh, well, uh, that, that opened another can of worms. Say it again. Said, you, how you know that? I, how you know that? I, I gotta go to bed. I'm serious. I got things to do. I think we. I think we're good. We'll come back because I think we're gonna leave on that because. He put it the same thing. What I'm saying. Listen, what it's saying. It says, "Love is the fulfilling of the law. Faith work it by love. Love is the motivating factor. Therefore, if I am prompt to do what you all are saying, I must examine: Did it come from a heart of love of God? That's all. I think that's what I'm saying." I'm not saying okay. Go. <laughs> this is, last comment. We'll let you sleep on this. Go ahead. Okay. There's so a difference. Somebody who works in customer service. What if you're asking because you really want to know? Like, did I say yeah, something? Yeah. Did I mention? Okay. Well, okay. she's saying if you work in customer oh, service, go ahead. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Go re okay. repeat it real quickly okay. now. Woo <laughs> wow. Okay, so what if you are asking from a place where you sincerely want to know, like, sincerely. Did, I like that I, word, sincerely. did I say something to offend you? Mm -hmm. Is there something in my tone to make you act like okay. this? Okay, that's very good. Okay, very good. I like that. All right, all right, say that, say that. Was it in my tone? Did it say, okay, now what you accomplished? It's not what you said, it's how you said it. Okay, hold on a minute. I'm going to go back again. What have you accomplished by raising that question? What do you want? No, I'm saying, what do you want to accomplish? Finding the root of their behavior. Oh! And if, oh! Oh! <laughs> no, no, no! Uh, Finding the now root I, of their behavior. I understand. I said, oh, because you just I really, you just confirming what we're talking about to me. You want to find the root of the behavior. Now, let me guess another. Question. For what purpose you want to find the root of the behavior? What's that going to do for you? No, it's no, 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 no. What's that? that gonna, no, you're not getting this. What is it going to do for you once you find the root of the behavior? So going back to what I said previously, if it was something that I said or did, then I can correct it. Okay. So once you find the root of their behavior. But if it's not, then the issue is with them. Okay. Then what? Then proceed the accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> please, please. I hope you, you're going to be around Friday. We're going to get to you. Anybody, does one person understand what's going on with her? The root. I mean, you, you, you answer the way the, the human heart answers. I agree with you because that's our problem. <laughs> we want to get to the root of the behavior. We want to now just pride. Now, why you spoke to me? I just want to get to know. Now, you tell me more about. I never found in the word of God that Jesus did that. That's why the heart. Yeah, I'm packing up. <laughs> Man, the heart. And what most. And as your audience is not, it's the motive that prompt you. I'm prompting because I want y'all to go to bed and be fresh. <laughs> okay, now, this is good. And, and we got Brother Teacher back. Woo! This place can come alive, brother. Thank you all. Welcome, Brother Teacher here. Tell him not to leave no more for a while. I appreciate you, cops. I do. All right. I know that. And I don't, want you, I don't want you to go to bed thinking, just say, Lord, give me understanding. Give me clear. That's what you do. Pray over that. Don't go to bed confused. Get understanding. Listen to what you all said. I want to get to the root of it. You, you don't even know your own heart. G get to the root of your own heart. You can't do it. How are you going to get the root of somebody's motives? How are you going to get down? You're going to keep, keep peeling, keep peeling until all they're going to do is just continue to confuse you. Then you say, I will proceed accordingly. <laughs> There's a different grits of sand. 
Let's, 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 there's different grits of sandpaper. Some are more rough than others. Amen. But sandpaper is used to make wood smooth. That's true. Amen. Circumstance, that's what we take in place. Very good point, Mark. Well, she said she wants to know what if she had done something wrong. That's all right. I was trying to get the root of his heart. See, but if she had if she, wrong, if she, I'm not personally, if Thomas Jackson is secure in Christ, that would not be my concern. I'm not going to try to get to the root. If I'm secure in my relationship with Christ, it's going to come forth. I want Christ to demonstrate a whole different response from me. Instead of asking this man, why, why are you talking? Why, why, I, that's not my role. My role is to reflect Christ. And that's what I see in the life of Christ. Only time Christ responded when it was an attack on his father. Hmm? He, the money changed. He didn't hit nobody, but the zeal, he said, the zeal of my father has eaten me up. He was hurt because of a father, man. And when he said, if you, you know, what have I said for you to slap me? He, he was having pity because they, he did not, he, they did not realize they were slapping God. Right. Ooh, you ain't get what I said. That's why he raised that question. Not because he didn't want to get to the root. He wanted to solve the problem. He was helping them to see Jesus, God. The motive. I'm telling the motive. We as a Christian, let me say, you have the right as a human being to do that. But as a God, as a Christ, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to pry into the root of that person. Motive. And what? I'm not saying, I'm not, don't take this. I'm just trying to help clear up. I'm saying when you and I are abiding in Christ, truly have a moment-by-moment -moment relationship, it's going to change the disposition of our mind. It's going to change the thinking process. It will do that. I'm telling you, try Jesus for 30 days. <laughs> Put him on. Try him for 30 days and see a change. See souls being drawn to you, to Christ through you. Like bees to honey. Praise God. See, the way you look at me, I could react to that. That's why I threw up a prayer while you look like that. The ministry of silence, we must learn it. Be slow to speak, quick to listen. Praise God. All right. We have good fellowship this evening. Pray over what we have heard thus far. Ask for greater clarity. Is that right? Well, let's keep all these prayer requests in prayer. All right. Now you <laughs> You want us to behave. <laughs> I don't want you to behave. <laughs> in a way that there is that you don't even exist. <laughs> you don't you don't that's, exist. That's what I you don't exist. <clears throat> that's right. Like there is no more Amen. You. Amen. Like you're non-existent. Sing it, child. <laughs> ye are dead. Ye are dead. Ye are dead. Now when if. Ye are dead Prayer request, Nadine Garvey asking prayer for her children. Let's keep her in prayer and the children in prayer. Amen. Let's have a closing word of prayer. Let us pray. Huh? Was it 6 o'clock? 6 o'clock? 6 o'clock Central Time. 6 p.m. Friday 
evening worship service. Brother Cobbs, welcome back. My, my family said, welcome back, Brother Cobb. He said, thank you. Pray for him, too. <laughs> Boy, they love them some brother teacher. Praise God for the message and messenger. Amen. This Father God in heaven, we thank you for being in the midst of us this evening. We thank you for the words of life. We thank you for the response and the interaction. We thank you for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in which one of our lives in the fellowship of your holy angels. So, Father, when we lay down tonight, let us lay down with the surety that all of our known, confessed sins have been forgiven. And the names remain in the book of life, and our sins have been blotted out. Now, grant us your grace and mercy that your angels be about us throughout this night, and let our sleep be refreshing and regenerating, and we give you all the praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Since to twenty and twenty. 